Thanks a lot for the kind invitation and for you to being here. So the previous speaker um, mentioned that we are in the future we will have a universal platform that will enable us to diagnose and personalize <laughs> treatment in cancer and I want in the 12 minutes that I have to convince you that the future is here. Okay, that's my little humble mission and uh, it's all of the work of these uh, three great uh, lab members of mine and I'm usually just the front man, you know how it is. So, um, the issue is as following. As you know, most of precision-based uh, oncology is based on sequencing 300, 400 cancer driver genes, right? And uh, looking for actionable mutations, and you all know, and so on. But the major problem with this approach is that it has low coverage. There's many, many patients that we cannot help. Now, we are looking just on 300, 400 genes, and everybody knows that the whole genome and the whole genes has a tremendous impact of what happens in our cells. So, in a way, we are just looking, yes, just at the spotlight, right? Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. So, um, we developed an approach that looks on the whole genome. So you have a tumor from a patient, you sample it, you, you, you obtain omics data, and we want to prioritize treatments based on the whole state of the 20,000 genes, and not just the 300, 400 cancer genes, and not just by mutations, okay? So our approach is based on uh, synthetic, uh, on this type of genetic interactions, which are called synthetic lethal and synthetic rescues. Next slide, please. Next slide. No, you're going backwards in the, I mean, we are going backwards in time. Thank you. And the next slide forward, please. Oh, thanks a lot. So, what is a synthetic little pair of genes? This is a pair of genes that if you knock out each of the, if each of the genes, the cells will not die. But if you knock both of the genes together, the cells will die, okay? Now, this is considered for 20 years that if we will only know the, the synthetic lethal network in cancer, that would be a major step forward because we will be able to treat patients. Why? Supposedly, we have a, a tumor from a patient and we see that gene A is inactivated in that patient. We, and Gene A is part of a synthetic lethal pair with gene B, and we have a drug that targets gene B. So if we give a drug to the patient, we can achieve the holy grail, at least theoretically, of selectively killing only the cancer cells in the patient. Guys, you're with me? That's a basic concept, okay? So all that remains is to find the damn cancer synthetic lethal network pair, but there's five billion, uh, 500 million pairs, so experimentally forget about it. But, luckily, big data, we now have tens of thousands of patient samples, and we came up with a way to mine the patient samples and identify the synthetic lethal pairs, and then to test them and show that it's good for the patients and so on and so on. And the basic intuition, just to give you an idea, is shamefully simple. You are looking across the cancer, 10,000 cancer patients' data, and you are looking to find pairs which are never lost together. That's a strong indication that they are selected against. That's why you don't see them in the samples, and that's a strong indication that they may be synthetic lethal, and that's why they are selected against, okay? Of course, God is in the details. There's many confounding factors, easier said than that, and so on and so on. Next slide, please. Oh yeah, so next slide. Okay, so we uh, developed and published a, a pipeline, and that's already old history two years ago, we, where we have shown that we can identify these synthetic in interactors. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. And, and you can identify such a synthetic uh, lethal network, it's, and it makes a lot of biological sense. We report about it in that paper. Next slide, please. And, and so the first thing you want to do to convince biologists that this is interesting and not just computational, you know, uh, stuff is to actually take all the synthetic little screens that were published and actually show that your predictions match them. And that's what we did in that publication. And we have about 80% accuracy. Okay, so of course this is noisy. Systems biology, we are not perfect, but we have a clear signal. Next slide, yeah, thank you. 
But recently, we have been doing something much more interesting and exciting from a translational point of view. Uh, we have developed a new pipeline, and we can actually, in this new pipeline, we can actually show that we can tailor the response to cancer patients across the TCGA. We can very nicely predict for many of the drugs, but not all of them, which patients will respond to them and which not, okay? Just by looking in a given patient on the functional activity states of the, the targets of the drug that are, that are uh, uh, the partners, the synthetic lethal partners of targets of the drugs. Okay, I hope you, you're with me. It's, you know, challenging to explain it in these time constraints. So you can see the level of, of accuracy that we get, and, and you know this is all unsupervised and directly from the patient's data. It's not supervised, there is no overfitting, okay? It's directly based on identifying these genetic interactions. Okay, next slide, please. This is quite interesting to show you, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know how to apply a pointer here, but yeah, beyond our technology. But what we can show, we have taken data of 200 patients from a very large medical center, top medical center, somewhere in the East Coast. And uh, these patients are, are, are advanced cancer patients, and they were NGS sequenced and looking for actionable mutations, and the people who gave us the data could help less than five patients, just to show you the low coverage. We estimate, looking on the whole genome, based on the synthetic lethal approach that I have shown you, that we can help about 60 patients and increase how we compute that it is different, increase their lifetime of 60 patients, expected lifetime threefold if we recommend them synthetic lethal drug therapies based on the whole genome. Next slide, please. Okay, but as you know, yes, selectivity, side effects is a major issue, but another major issue in cancer treatment is resistance, right? We are developing these great drugs, new biological precision base. They have great success, but after a year or two, many times, regrettably, the disease returns. So something has to be done. We have identified a new kind of genetic interactions which are called synthetic rescues. In a synthetic rescue, uh, the knockout of the first gene, let's say of a by a cancer target, actually puts the cells in, in stress, the cancer cells in stress, and they will die. But then an alteration in another gene, right, may actually rescue the cancer cells. It turns out that by looking and analyzing the whole uh, TCGA data and beyond that, by now we are analyzing three 30,000 cancer samples, we can identify the pathways by which resistance evolves, and by that get candidate targets that with every cancer drug, we can actually get a target to give combinational therapy that will mitigate the resistance, of course, as, as best as we can. As you know, there are, very, there are different mechanisms for resistance, and we are attacking just one of them. So. Uh, we have done that. Next slide, please. And we have such a network. Next slide. And we did experimental validations with our collaborator, Sylvia Goodking at UCSD. We actually predicted, I don't have time to go into depth into the slide, but we predicted um, um, the, the synthetic rescue interactions around mTOR, which, as you know, is a major cancer modulated, and we have experimental validations in a few cancer cell lines that indeed the predictions are on the mark. Next slide, please. Thank you. And, and furthermore, I can tell you, I, I don't have the slide to show it here, but there's actually been, if you read Nature or Science, every month or so you will find that there is a publication that identifies by looking on diff differential gene expression and knockout experiments that identifies resistant signatures in specific cancers for a specific drug, right? Many of you have seen that. But that takes, you know, a whole clinical study and a lot of money and so on and so on. We have taken the four or five recent publications in Nature of such signatures and we show that just by analyzing the existing data, we can find these signatures without spending one dollar of the taxpayer's money. 
Okay? Uh, so we identified the whole drug-specific synthetic rescues. So the, just to, to give you an idea, the, 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 the reds are the, the, the blue like things are the drugs, the reds are the targets, the green are the rescuers. This is how it looks. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. Thank you. And using this network, we have estimated, we went back to the TCGA data and have estimated actually what is the likelihood that resistance will emerge. Just based on these mechanisms of network-based synthetic rescue pathways for the current array of cancer drug targets. And you can see the picture is quite frightening. For a very large number of our current cancer drugs, we can see, you know, by a quantitative rigorous analysis, that there is a very large chance of emerging resistance. So that's the pessimistic aspect. Next slide, please. Next slide, thank you. On the optimistic side, we predict, if you may see, for each drug, we can predict one single major rescuer that if you hit it in combinatorial therapy together with the original cancer drug therapy, you will significantly mitigate resistance as measured by, you know, standard clinical uh, uh, log ratio of, of the risk analysis and so on and so on. And next slide, we uh, predicted, we we took a paper that was published in Science a while ago in lung cancer that uh, identified uh, combinatorial therapies to counteract resistance. And again, we showed a, a very considerable match between our predictions and those that were verified experimentally. And finally, the final slide. Next slide, please. Yes, so, so in summary, um, I've shown you uh, a, a, a Monty Python different approach to start to go beyond this, you know, deadlock of looking, you know, action limitations, 300, 400 genes. Another approach which looks on the whole genome and applies these concepts, which are, you know, already in many years, fundamental concepts in genetics, applies these concepts of synthetic lethals and synthetic rescues to first select and optimize treatments for cancer patients, and second of all, try to do something about this problem of resistance. Yes, the time has come. And I want to tell you that uh, I think our results are quite exciting, and these papers now are under review, one in Nature Genetics, one in Nature, and so on. I hope they will be out soon. But we are just, you know, scratching the tip of the iceberg. There's so much work to be done, and I want to encourage any of you who's born, born interested in, in study this more and, and join this effort to, to talk to me. I will be glad to share, help as much as we can. So thanks a lot.